good. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our uh, conversation um, this morning-ish, um, depending on where we are in the world, um, with Olivier Brossard, who is someone um, that lots of us will know. Um, many of us at the network have been lucky enough to encounter and, and to work with. Um, someone who, at least in my experience, inspires a kind of ubiquitous um, admiration. Um, everyone I've talked to about Olivier just says, gosh, isn't he amazing? Um, in all kinds of contexts. Um, so it's really fantastic to be talking with him. He's known for sc his scholarly work in um, various contexts, um, but also for his work as a poetry organiser um, and as a translator. So Olivier has translated work um, into French um, by Ron Padgett, uh, Bill Berkson, Frank O'Hara, John Ashbury um, and Joe Brainard. Um, and he's also the one of the Helms people of um, the Poets and Critics group. Um, which again may be familiar to some of us, um, along with uh, Abigail Lang and Vincent Brocker. Um, and he's the editor of this gorgeous book of work on Frank O'Hara called Lovers of My Orchards, which contains um, pieces by uh, Leanne Brown, Adam Fitzgerald, Bill Berkson, Todd Colby, Edmund Berrigan, Vincent Katz, and is just a, a fantastic book. Um, and then most recently, he's put together this really incredible bibliography. Um, the amount of work which has gone into that, I just can't even get my head around, um, which is United States poetry translated into French, um, stretching from 1786, I think, to the present day. Um, so it's huge. And Olivier, of course, co-organized our symposium last spring, um, our network symposium in Paris. Um, he teaches at uh, University Gustave Eiffel in Paris um, and is a member of Double Change, um, a collective which brings together US poetry um of um, u.s poetries and french poetry um so um olivia thank you for for being here and and for talking to us um and i'll just start by asking you the question that we ask everyone which is what brought you to the new york school how did you end up researching and writing and translating new york school poetry um well i guess initially well first of all thank you so much for having me um and um Initially, um, um, I, I think it's through the Poetry Project um, in, uh, the, in 1999, um, I, I was sent to New York to, um, it's gonna sound strange, but to do my national military service, which in my case uh, was a civil service, uh, which I applied for. Uh, and I was sent to the cultural services of the French embassy in New York on Fifth Avenue. And uh, my job was to organize um, the writers program of the embassy as well as um, the academics program. And I was, uh, I mean, my tasks uh, were to organize readings, um, talks, um, and to liaise with different, different um, universities, um, cultural institutions. And um, at the time, I'd written um, a, a math, master thesis on, on Will and Carlos Williams, and I was really interested in, in um, um, American poetry. And, and um, I wanted to organize a French poetry festival, uh, which led me to, and I was told, well, you should really go to the Poetry Project. And um, there I met Marcel Adrand, uh, and together, just to cut it short, uh, I'm, you know, I met Marcella, but with many other uh, persons, but she was in charge of programming at the time. And together with Marcella, we uh, organized uh, a French poetry festival uh, in uh, March 2000 which uh, brought to uh, New York uh, Emmanuel Ocar, uh, Franck André Jam, Jacques Roubault, and Abdelatif Lahabi. Um, and on the evening of, um, the, um, of, of, of the reading at the, at the church, uh, I mean, the church was packed, um, and there were a lot of American poets, um, in, obviously, in, in, at the church that night. And, it's the night that I met John Ashbery, Ron Paget, and many other people. 
And by, I started attending a lot of readings before, I mean, as soon as I got to New York, um, started going to various uh, reading uh, series, not only the Poetry Project, but also um, uh, Double Happiness, which uh, was in a bar in, 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 in Chinatown at the time, and uh, started meeting a lot of, a lot of people, uh, I mean, too many to name, uh, really. And I must say that the, the poetry community in New York uh, was really, really um, hospitable and, and it was such a warm welcome. And a lot of friends, uh, Marcella Eleni Sicilianos, who was living in New York at the time, uh, directed me to the New York School. I mean, it's really um, to, I mean, I, I owe the, my interest in the New York School to the community of of poets uh, in New York. And again, there are too many people. I wish I could name all the friends, but um, but so it was from living in New York. Um, mm -hmm. And at the time, so this job that I had, which my national service lasted for 16 months. And it was at a time when I was thinking of, of uh, applying for a PhD program. And um, I, I, I really, fell in love with Frank O'Hara's work, which before moving to New York, I was not familiar with. And, um, and then at the end of my national service, I applied for Fulbright uh, and, this, and, and asked for permission to stay in New York. Um, and this is when I started doing legwork for my PhD, uh, spending a lot of time in the Kenneth Koch archives. Um, and, um, at the end of my stay, I was still on a, in a, in a program with the Ecole Normale Supérieure. So I still had a year to go of the Ecole Normale Supérieure and I asked for permission to do that year abroad in New York. So to extend, uh, my time in New York and which they accepted mm. and, but because I squandered, uh, my, 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 salary from my grant from the Economa Superior, I squandered, so to speak, on rent money. Um, I needed to find a job. And this is when very generously, um, John Ashbury, you know, suggested that I worked as, as his assistant from, it must have been uh, July uh, 2001 to basically June 2002. I love your Genesis story because it's full of like you know the kinds of cross pollinations that mark <laughs> New York school poet right the 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 idea of this like reverse kind of cross cultural pollination that you did by also like reversing what would have been a normal military service <laughs> into a civil service and when you mentioned Coke I was just thinking about how Coke himself had had he had he went to France didn't he for his Fulbright and he also encouraged. Ron Padgett to apply for his Fulbright in France and John Ashbery had spent time. So it's just like, it's sort of a very kind of natural path that you were walking by walking back from France to America, bringing French poetry and then, you know, back and forth is just, it just feels so perfect. And then also being one of John Ashbery's, you know, John Ashbery's assistant, you join a line, don't you? Of like John Yao, for example, um, was Jordan Davis also an assistant at one point? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think Jordan did quite a lot of work with uh, Coke. Kenneth Coke. Kenneth yeah. Coke. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yes, yeah, sorry. But this idea, you know, that kind of like, I don't know if it's a baton or if it's like, you know, the influence through touch <laughs> of like actually being intimately engaged with the work at hand. It just feels like such a fertile ground for your own blossoming as a poet. Um, had you well, been writing before you got there, or? Did it start after? Um, no, but thank you, Yasmin, for, for what you said. And um, I was not so much aware, actually, of the cross-pollination at the time. It's only afterwards that I discovered that, indeed, um, Kenneth John uh, had had been on a, on a Fulbright. Um, about writing, I, I, I 
wrote poetry and I've been writing poetry for a long time, but I'm mostly close, closeted, uh, so to speak. Uh, Sorry to open the closet on you. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, there's a time when you, you got to do it. Um, and um, so in terms of publications, I've only published in, in, in a few magazines in uh, France. Um, I write in French uh, also because um, thus far, I haven't really been uh, extremely satisfied uh, with what I was putting out or writing, at least. Um, so, um, but I was, uh, but I was totally fascinated by by the the community of of poets and what they were. Um, well, I was going to say teaching me. Uh, it's mm -hmm. really been a sort of uh, literary education uh, and also an artistic um, education for me in, 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 in relation to painting. Um, Bill Berkson, for instance, actually took me to a lot of gallery when he was vis visiting New York uh, to a lot of gallery openings. And um, I had I, I come from a small town and in, in the west part of France, uh, where at the time there were no museums. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to say that I had no exposure to art, but compared to someone who grew up in Paris, for instance, I had little exposure to art and no formal training in art. And just being around a lot of people uh, in New York um, helped me. Uh, I wouldn't say catch up because it would really sound pretentious, but I at least get a you know, a smattering of, of um, um, an artistic education, definitely working, working, writing my PhD on O'Hara was definitely, uh, that was a complete education in, 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 in painting and art history. And uh, so that, that was uh, interesting. I mean, Olivia, the military, oh, sorry. No, go, go ahead, on. Rana. I was just gonna say the military service angle is, is kind of fascinating um, in that it reminds me of those lines from the poem Napsa when he O'Hara's like, oh Jean de Buffet, when you think of him doing his military service in the Eiffel Tower as a meteorologist. And it's obviously a very different context, but I just I, I like the idea that there's this kind of back and forth between France and, and the US that kind of takes shape in incidental ways that you can't plan and that you can't predict for and that the arts and the military might intersect um, in these ways. And I just wondered about your sense of, the, like France is obviously such an important outpost for, um, for Coke and Ashbury and, and O'Hara, as we've, as we've said. And I just wondered about that you've done so much work in terms of translations, like keeping that relationship alive in France. Um, and I wondered about, like, is there a kind of appetite, do you feel at the moment or in the last kind of 20 years amongst French poets and scholars, but also kind of more widely for New York mm -hmm. School? Like, does O'Hara have that kind of, um, in particular, have that sort of magnetism that he has, um, certainly here in the UK? Um, that's a, a really good question. Um, and it's a complex one. Um, has there been an appetite for American poetry at large in France? I think the answer is um, yes. Uh, Abigail Lang's book, The uh, Transatlantic Conversation, uh, mm. which is being translated into English at the moment and should be published um, hopefully next year, um, traces um, that interest uh, spanning the 1960s, 70s and, and 80s. Um, the new as to the New York School, um, it's it's interesting because when when I when I defended my PhD, uh, O'Hara to talk about uh, Frank O'Hara had not been uh, translated into um, French except in 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 a few magazines and as. I think as early as probably the, the early 1970s, uh, various poets uh, translated his work, in, but it, it never was a substantial amount. Um, I think he was included in the uh, 1956 anthology that Alain Bosquet put out, um, and or it was the 1960 anthology. He put out two anthologies, but in any case, uh, there was not, I mean, 
no books were available by O'Hara uh, in 2006. And so what I wanted to do was to get his work out in French, which we started doing by um, uh, translating uh, lunch poems and meditations in an emergency with, and I worked with Ron Paget um, as co-translator, which was also uh, a great, education for me in, in, in translation, because Ron is such a wonderful uh, translator. Um, and um, so it's, it's, it's this question, and I, I, I wish, I mean, this could be the topic of, uh, you know, a, a conference, really, of the connection. I mean, is there an appetite for the French, but by the French for the New York School Poets? Um, I remember John, uh, who was quite unhappy about his reception in France because um, I think the first, so the first book I sh should know, I think the first book came out in the 70s, um, the, the first book by John, Fragments and, and, and Clepsydra, um, short selected poems. And, and then he had to wait until 1993, I believe, for his French selected to, to, to come out translated by Pierre Martori and Anne Talvaz, came out with P.O.L. Um, and um, I think there's something about the, the New York School Poets, which is that they, they may be too French, <laughs> in a sense, for the French to... Um, yeah, to I was be, thinking just that like not derivative necessarily, but I was thinking about how, as you're speaking, sorry to interrupt, but how the admiration clearly goes one way, you know, but it's not necessarily palpable the other way. So it's a it's such a good question that you ask, Rona. And you're right, Olivier, it would be an amazing conference of like pulling the will to say yes together. <laughs> right. And and it's it's also the fact that, I mean, and 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 what I'm saying is, probably too coarse, um, but it's it's also the fact that the poets that um, Abigail, um, the French poets that Abigail wrote about, amongst whom uh, Emmanuel Ocar, whom I was uh, fortunate to, to, to know, um, and Claude royer Journaux, likewise, uh, amongst others were, so, Poets who started writing in, in, in the six, 70s in, in, in France were extremely interested in the objectivists and the objectivist tradition as well as uh, the language movement. Um, I'm not saying that they were not interested in the New York School uh, poets, mm -hmm. but they directed uh, a lot of their efforts uh, towards uh, you know, promoting uh, the objectivists and and the language poets, um, and um, Kenneth Cope, for instance, um, did not. I mean, uh, there were very few books by Kenneth Cope pub, um, of, of of poetry published in in French. Uh, the first substantial book is the one that we did two years ago, uh, which is a selected uh, poems. And when I say we, um, it's Joka Seria, the publishing house, whose um, US poetry series, or rather North American now poetry series I, I, I edit. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's mostly a question of who, I mean, what poets were, interest, were interested in what US poets at, at, at a given time. And, and um, um, one, could not do everything at once, and and so, but to talk about the present day, um, there is uh, like I'm, I'm thinking of of someone like Stéphane Bouquet, mm -hmm. um, who um, translated Jimmy Schuyler for us, and so we did a, a French uh, selected Schuyler, which uh, Stéphane uh, translated, and he's really an amazing translator, and there's something about the New York School pose also, which, which is difficult, which is, and it has, I'm thinking about Schuyler, O'Hara, Ashbery to some extent, although in a very different manner, it's the uh, colloquial 
uh, diction. I mean, they're, they're, they're different dictions. I'm not trying to say that they're similar, but it, but it implies that you find someone, a translator, uh, willing or capable of uh, finding a, a, an equivalent, a co colloquial equivalent in French, which is not, which is not easy. Uh, like um, we also put out a volume of Joe Brainerd's writing, which when you read them in, in English, you're like, oh, it's going to be a cinch to translate into French. Not at all, because our language is, has a form of rigidity that, Eng I mean, English does not so much. I, I know that I'm blabbering out cliches here, but there's a suppleness in English that we lack in French. And which, and and Joe Brainerd works. I mean, he works magic with his. With I'm I'm thinking of his prose writings, um, which are unbelievable. They're really really hard to translate into French, even if when you read them at first sight, um, they look simple. So Stefan is is an example of someone who. Um, um, brings attention to the New York School Poets. And what's interesting is that in his own writing, um, I mean, I don't know if you would agree, um, I saw him a few days ago, but I think he was very much influenced by his own translations of Skyler. And he has picked up a speed and velocity and also some of that suppleness that comes from um, those poets in his own writing in French, which is why Lindsay Turner, who's translating Stefan back uh, into English, um, reads his work as partly New York School derived uh, or New York School affiliated. And I think that's really, really interesting. And parts of it has to do also with uh, the willingness in French to work with uh the the self the subject the lyrical self uh which got such bad publicity after the second world war in 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 france not only in france but uh, but there was a form of lyricism uh or lyrical voice uh or self expression that you could no longer maintain um which probably explained why Emmanuel Ocar and other poets were so interested in the objectivists mm -hmm. uh, in the language movements at a time when the language, some of the language poets were really extremely critical of um, self-centered uh, poetic positions. Even if again, this is summing up, this is partly cliche and it probably would not hold a uh, closer scrutiny, but this is just um, to provide a sort of uh, uh, quick summary of, of the situation. So there is now interest in, 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 I mean, now, and I'm not saying that what we've done with Joka Seria came out of nowhere. I mean, we clearly um, benefited from um, the work that was done from people who came before, including uh, Emmanuel Ocar and, and uh, Juliette Valéry, who published a lot of chat books, including chat books by New York School poets in the uh, in as as early as the nineteen uh, eighties. Sorry, long long answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that I mean it 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 makes a lot of sense, especially when you frame it in the context of the relationship between Stéphane Bouquet's translation, his writing in French, and then Lindsay Turner's translations of his writing. Um, into um, English because um, she's obviously a poet as well and is working right. within the kind of that that tradition and and it's just it's it's fascinating to think about we often think about lineages kind of going like vertically when actually right. what seems to be happening here is is you know Stefan's translations over here and then his his own poetry and then Lindsay's work and then Lindsay's own work over here all kind of interacting with each other across all of that um, and I wondered about you you do so much in terms of bringing together um, US poetries and um, or like anglophone poetries I guess it's, it's more than just US um, although I guess it's predominantly there but like a number of the poets that you posted at the poets and critics symposiums have been 
New York School connected. So um, Alice Notley, Ron Padgett, um, people like that. And I and and then you've got the the kind of double change project as well. Um, and I just and, and then of course the bibliography um, where you've kind of said here are all the works in French if you want to read them. And I just wondered how like what what you kind of see your role as being in that in that kind of history of bringing French poetry to the United States or United States poetry to France? Um, thank you for uh, your question. Uh, well, um, I guess I'm just, you know, and, and I'm saying I, but it's it's also a collective. Uh, yeah, of yeah. Friends. Um, um, <laughs> basically, but as far as I'm concerned, just continuing what I was trying to do when I was working at, at the embassy, mm. uh, in, in, in New York and was lucky to learn about the, the many exchanges that had gone on between um, not only French and US literatures, but also other literatures and, and the idea of um, exchanges and, and cross pollinations and, um, and also translation as um, such a great creative uh, yes. process. Yeah. Um, not only creative, but also learning process, and and um, that that to me was was uh, amazing. So when when I moved, actually, we started the collective double change in two thousand, and I was still living in New York. Uh, Vincent Broca visited me, and um, it was, I mean, coming from Paris, where things existed. I mean, Emmanuel Ocar had a, a reading series in, in the um, 80s. Um, but probably the, at the time when I was living in Paris in from 95 to 99, I didn't really know where to go. In any case, New York really blew my mind in terms of, I mean, you could go to a reading a night, probably <laughs> 10 readings a night. Um, and so we, when when Vincent also um, um, discovered the, the 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 scene in 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 New York, we decided to try and do something on a you know on a humble scale in in Paris and start a a magazine uh, which we wanted to be online um, and a reading series. And we first started in December two thousand um, in a pub in, in uh, Paris um, at Odeon. At the time, I didn't know which, it's, it's funny, I didn't know that it was a block away, not even a block away from um, Sylvia, Sylvia Beach's uh, bookstore, Shakespeare and Company, and Adrien Monnier's bookstore, Les Amis des Livres, which were instrumental figures in the 1920s in, in, in bringing uh, French uh, and European and U.S. literatures together. I mean, what they did was 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 incredible. Uh, at the time, I didn't know it, um, and and so we started doing a reading a month, approximately. It's been going on for now twenty three years, wow. um, and the, the general idea is just to bring a, a an Anglophone poet and a French language poet um, together. Uh, and 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 people started joining the and it's a small collective, but but um, a few friends, Abigail Lang, uh, Sarah Riggs, Omar Berada, uh, joined uh, the the collective. And um, you were asking about poets and critics. The so the reading series. The point of the reading series was that we were all Vincent and I, um, and Abigail, but we we met Abigail slightly later. Uh, but Vincent and I were in PhD programs, and we wanted the we wanted the reading series to be outside of academia, not not as a gesture of defiance, but we wanted to be we wanted it to be in the city as opposed to in any sort of like formal um, uh, you know department. And um, but also because our jobs when when we finished our PhDs and we got jobs, our jobs are to work on and write about and translate uh, Anglophone poetry with, and I was specializing in US poetry. It's the way that things are framed in, in France, at least you become an Americanist. And uh, we also wanted to uh, 
uh, create a format um, at the university that would allow us to invite writers and spend time with them. In that sense, we, I had been very much impressed by the series that Marc Chenquier uh, ran at the University of Paris 7 uh, called The Observatory of American Literature, where he would invite uh, a lot of uh, fiction writers mostly, but not only, I met the Waldrops, Keith and Rosemary Waldrops, uh, Waldrop, um, at the um, Odela, which Mark ran. Uh, Vincent himself started a, a, a series of seminars at Créteil with uh, Caroline Bergval. And so in 2011, we applied for funding with uh, my university, uh, which was not called Gustave Eiffel at the time, but never mind. And um, they, and it was the, the, the call for funding was for any sort of academic project that we might have. And so we, we you know, uh, applied for funding, got it uh, to run two day seminars where we, uh, we, we didn't want to do conferences because we already had conferences going on. Colleagues would organize conferences all the time, which is a format that we also like. But what we wanted to do was to um, sort of invert the ratio that you have in conferences where you have a talk and then you have a five minute uh, discussion. We wanted to have like a 90 percent, uh, 90 uh, percent discussion, maybe, you know, 10 percent presentations. And in the end, um, the Poets and Critics Symposium uh, or Symposia are Two, they're like two day interviews of one poet who is, uh, you know, uh, surrounded, so to speak, by a group of uh, translators, poets, academics, artists, uh, people from all uh, professional walks of life. So I'm not sure, did I answer your question, Rana? I might ask a follow up um, before I suddenly have to go. Um, you know, sorry for mistaking you for being primarily a poet um, and outing you, but the work that you're doing is just so creative um, on every front and it's generative. Um, it's it's like, cure, you know, birthing a scene or continuing the possibility of a scene um, in from abroad in Paris. Um, I just wonder, and I think Rona and I are sort of asking a similar question, you know, uh, different versions of the same question, which is, I mean, I, in talking to you now, hear you as participating in the New York School project by, by doing that thing the New York School does, which is proliferate itself. And I wonder if you feel through the academics and the writers that you've mentioned that this is like a very kind of easy proliferation or if it's like a very willful one that is happening abroad. You mean that is happening in France? Yeah, or... that you are, you know, that you are participating in in France. Uh, it's Because it's a... I think Rona and I are both sort of hinting towards, it sounds like, you know, we know the history is that New York school poets learn so much and not just New York school, American poets learn so much in the 20th century from French poetry, right? Um, and that the flip might not be true, but yet here you are a cohort of French, all right, quietly, secretly poets and <laughs> academics and writers um, who are kind of, you know, making sure this thing goes on there. Um, so what is it that you, you know, and you're mentioning how difficult it is to continuing the colloquialism, for example, of New York school writing, you know, or the everyday talk, the quotidien, but actually, no, but the quotidien is still available to you, isn't it? The, like the material of the street, the everyday, the, that is available, isn't it? So I guess I'm wondering it, you know, is that what is gleaned and how willful is that gleaning? And is there a sense of, um, you know, a newer generation coming out of your scene that is excited to continue the work that you're so um, wonderfully doing. 
Um, yes, there, there, there are um, younger uh, generations. Just to go back to the first uh, part of your question, uh, is the uh, proliferation um, easy? I think, um, I mean, I, you know, there are a lot of poets, I'm sure, in France who read um, um, not only what we've published and translated and what other publishing houses have published and translated of the New York School Poets, but who read the New York School Poets directly in English and are inspired by them. So we're, we're really not the only ones uh, who are interested in that. I really don't want to sound as though we are. Um, so, and, and, um, um, and there is an entire new generation of, of uh, women poets uh, who, um, and, and um, collectives who um, work, uh, I mean, who've been very much inspired by Anne Waldman, for instance, um, Alice Notley as well, um, and other, other uh, figures. Um, so um, yes, I mean, it, it's, I, I think the, uh, the, the, the younger uh, generation, I, I don't know so well because I'm, I'm becoming old. <laughs> um, but um, but um, my sense is, is that, yes, there is, um, um, I mean, the, the poetry scene in France is quite vast, um, very much alive, um, thanks to uh, great, institutions, I mean, I don't know whether I should call them institutions or not, that, that sounds too formal, but for instance, Maison de la Poésie, like poetry houses mm -hmm. in various cities, and, and um, there is one of the most active ones is, is the um, uh, Poets House in, in Nantes, uh, which is run by Ma Magali Brazil and other, uh, and her colleagues. Um, and when you look at what she's, and she invited Ashbery actually in I think it's 2003. Um, she, um, when you look at what she's done over the course of 20 some years uh, and the, 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 the younger generation of French poets that she's invited, um, you have an interesting panorama of, of contemporary uh, French poetry. And amongst those poets, there are a lot of, of poets who um, I'm sure are influenced by, or not so sure whether the term of influence is, is the right one, but, but our readers of uh, the New York School. Another place is the uh, International Center for Poetry in Marseille, which has an amazing library, which is partly derived from Jacques Roubault's library. Um, and they organize uh, readings, publications, um, and uh, they, around the uh, CIPM, um, um, there is a community of, of, of writers, um, publishers such as Eric Pesty, um, and they're very well aware of uh, the New York School, um, which uh, and poets, which uh, sometimes they would read in in in, in English uh, directly with without needing the the, the translation. So um, it's it's and and. One thing that I have not mentioned is that, um, you know, I, I've been talking about books, some of the books that we've done, like the Kenneth Koch um, Selected, for instance, but a lot of work has been done by magazines. Uh, I, I'm thinking of uh, the magazines that Liliane Giraudon, who's a really great uh, figure of, of, of French poetry, and she's been instrumental uh, with um, Jean-Jacques Vuitton and other poets in translating U.S. poetry into French uh, with her magazines, uh, Banana Split and If. Um, and, um, and, and, and it's also a way because, I mean, you can read, you know, uh, poetry in, in, in books, but, but magazines really, really help disseminate um, the work. Um, so um, I think it's, it's really been a collective um, effort and and as as a translator and editor um publisher and academic i've, I've really been well, one word that i would like to say is is gratefulness really uh for uh the people who have come uh before who are still with us um 
uh, for some of them, thank God, and, and who um, have really paved uh, the way. So it's not as though what we've done came out of, of nothing you know, by, by far. I really love um, that idea of all of this as being a form of creativity and a form of making. Um, I think that that feels like a really generative way of, of looking at it both. Um, like you said, you know, translation as a creative process, um, but also the idea of um, the, the two day event where you give space um, to discussion as a form of creative process. Um, and then the kind of the labor that goes into those magazines, um, the publication that that again is kind of keeping this alive. Like it's all it's all a kind of form of making um, that feels really kind of generatively removed from some of the more um, institutional kind of ways of sharing, um, particularly across borders and across languages. Um, so I think it's it's more just a kind of a, a comment or a reflection that it, it it seems that people respond really well to it, um, and I and I wondered I mean mainly about the the poets and critics kind of formula the two day um, idea of um, sitting in a room you know for the participants but also for the poets and I, I wondered you know when you first kind of pitched that or first started running these events how did the poets that you invited respond to this? I mean, do some poets kind of love the idea of being the center of attention for two days? Are others sort of going, oh, I don't know if I could cope with that amount of scrutiny? Um, like, did it, does, has it always kind of worked? I, I love the format, but I, I wonder if there are difficulties with it. <laughs> um, there are, I mean, one of the terms that comes to mind, and I, I really want to say this before I, I forget, is generosity. On, on, on behalf of, of all people involved. Uh, first of all, the writer invited because it's, I mean, it's a two day discussion with her or him and it can be taxing. Um, the second thing, bye bye, yes, me. Uh, and the second, the, the second form of generosity is um, from, from members uh, who attend the symposium, I mean, members. Uh, participants who come and gather with us around um, the, the, the poet, uh, also because they, in terms, in academic terms, it's not something that you can't say I'm going to a conference. No. So because you're not going to give a paper, we, we don't we don't do that. Uh, it doesn't mean that we do not prepare the symposia. Yeah. But, we, but it's not a conference, so you can't say you can't add a line to your CV, to your resume. Um, so it's and it's a lot of time, two days uh, to take out of your <laughs> work week uh, is, is, is a lot of time. So, again, we're really grateful for um, the great uh, friends and colleagues who've joined us over the years. And, and another form of gen generosity is um, to uh, or of um, my university and, and the Institut Universitaire de France. And, and Abigail and Vincent's universities who have funded um, the um, such events, um, although um, they don't give, I mean, they, they don't, we don't put out proceedings. I mean, we do record uh, the events, but we don't publish proceedings, even though we are working on, 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 um, uh, a, a volume which which would come out of the poets and critics um, ten years of of actually more than ten years of of uh, symposia, but uh, so it's it's a particular format also in the sense that um, the um, there's no I mean there's something reassuring about conferences is that you know when you speak you know that you're given twenty minutes and that if you go over you're going to be told. <laughs> stop uh, and that's it's going to be five or ten minute discussion uh, there's no such um, you know um, sort of time frame or uh, schedule for us even if we've tried to formalize it just a tiny bit in the sense that the first morning is devoted to just the participants gathering without the poet just to touch base because we're scattered all over the world and we haven't really had time to uh, I mean we discuss things over emails, you know, before, but um, nothing on, on, on the level of, of spontaneous discussion. 
And so for like three hours, we prepare um, the afternoon session with the poet and the, and the next uh, day. Uh, but uh, because there is no uh, predetermined uh, schedule or format, uh, it can be, there's a sense of, um, I mean, for someone who's anxious, um, it, it, it can be, it can be stressful because you don't know where the discussion is going to go. And sometimes some friends and colleagues will, will just do a sort of a super short, um, how to put it, not talk because it would be one or two minutes, but, but would, would, would you know, throw an idea uh, so that the poet can can play with it, can respond, and and uh, but it's a format that also makes for or allows for silences, yeah, uh, for moments of lower intensity or greater intensity, and it doesn't. I think it really should do that, um, and it works also because we have we have t we have time, and it's in in in. I, I'm, again, I'm extremely grateful that we are given this time without with no strings attached in terms of in terms of funding, and that yeah. that really has been uh, wonderful. Um, and maybe the fact that part of the funding has been coming through my university, which is um, uh, highly scientific, not only scientific, but we have a lot of colleagues working in the science departments. Uh, when you present an experimental format in literature, they, they, they can relate to this. You know, maybe something's gonna come out of it, maybe something will not come out of it, or surely something will come out of it, but something unexpected might come out of it. Yeah. And we've had amazing, uh, we've really had amazing moments. Uh, and it's also exhausting yeah, um, <laughs> for the poet um, because, well, you have to like the first afternoon. It's is is three to four hours, and then you have a full day. And at the end of the first day, there's a poetry reading that you have to muster energy for. Uh, so it's it's um, but it's it's um, it's really it's great. And there have been other instances of I mean, or um, of of such a format uh, before. I'm thinking of the. Uh, during the war, the Second World War, what Jean Valle was doing at Mount Holyoke um, College, yeah. college, um, where he met Marion Moore, um, something that David Hurd um, wrote an article about. Um, so, um, and 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 so the, the the format is is probably not groundbreaking, but it's just the idea. It's a conversation, um, and that. That's really, it's really been, I, I think I can say this for Abigail and Vincent, and uh, it's really been feeding us. Uh, um, and, and again, was also, I would like to insist on, on the variety of, of participants. It's not only academics, but also yeah. academics slash translators slash uh, writers slash artists, um, or not slash. <laughs> uh, and, um, so it's, and and so and there is a, a feeling of of um, community. A lot of we've made uh, a lot of uh, friends uh, through the uh, through the years who come back to Paris, which we're really grateful uh, for. And we've tried organizing. Well, not only we've tried, but we did one in in New York on Susan Howe, um, thanks to Rachel Levitsky and, and Cole Swenson, amongst others. Um, so. Um, so yeah, what you said about generosity and in in relate in relation to the sciences, I think is fascinating. Just in terms of the the the, the funding model um, that that kind of so often goes with institutions is what is the output? Like what are mm -hmm. we going to get if we give you this money? Um, and so it's really interesting actually to think about this in relation to a kind of scientific experiment where you might not get anything out mm -hmm. of it. Um, where the experiment will happen, maybe something will transpire, but you know, often it won't. It'll just be, you know, not not exactly deemed not a failure, but like a process. And it right. makes me think of um, I think Jenny Quilter talks about this in her in her book and and 
uh, in the context of Ron Padgett sending um, one of his um, books to Lisa Hornick to publish and it coming back with a few errors in it and then Granary Press republishing that and Ron saying oh let's keep the errors in because errors are this kind of trace of development that's like part of the process so it's really it's really um kind of encouraging to hear that this is a project that's not funded on the basis of what will you give me at the end of the two days it's just like the two days will happen and we'll hear conversations and we'll talk to each other and we'll ask questions and we'll sit in kind of generative silence of times and and then it will be over and we'll kind of go away having learned huge amounts but with nothing to you don't have to do anything with it after that you can just sort of take it as an experience that was hugely productive in in ways that you can't put a number on exactly um, or quantify i think i think that's so important yeah yeah and 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 it's it's um again I, I, when we when we had the initial funding for it uh we I, I was totally surprised because i was not expecting it um and it was a time 2011 when we first applied when under sarkozy um and things were were difficult in france and everything was being quantified mm -hmm. and and um but luckily at my university people were smarter <laughs> And, and more uh, interested in, in seeing what, um, I mean, things do come out of it, but yeah. in ways that are not necessarily predictable, but also in a sort of constellation way where like yeah. someone, uh, like one participant might put out a work that is related to the symposium, which is something that I cannot bank on. And I think exactly. that's, that's, that's exactly. great. Yeah, that, um, that sense of unpredictable outcome. So you can't right. promise anything you can say yes huge things you know probably will happen um but i can't tell you what they're going to be you know it could be I, I just i remember um some of just some of the lines from conversations with alice um not Lee last spring um and and thinking about the ways in which they could kind of percolate into other forms of writing some right. of the things that she would say kind of off the cuff and then that someone would respond to and, and there's a kind of sense in which you know you can't tell where this is going to go um which is wonderful right it, it is it is and I, I i can remember moments of uh, incredible moments during a lot of symposiums uh where something was happening in 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 the um well in the very statement or process as you said of of, of stating um ones or the poet's thought um and that was it was incredible but um yeah so are you able to say anything about next year's poets and critics um if, you, if that's something that you want to do now or if we can just share that for you later um we we can talk about it um i don't have a date yet but um so our next guest will be john yao yeah um and we're preparing uh, a, a French selected edition of his poems translated by Marc Gentier. Amazing. And um, hopefully it will be in the spring. So I'm, I'm, we're working with John to determine a, a, a specific date or specific dates uh, to, to bring him over in, 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 uh, to Paris. Um, and um, as soon as um, I have the, we have the dates, we'll write the group to, to, let, to let you know. Um, and so we'll talk. Yeah, so the idea is to talk with John about his, his obviously his poetry, um, his long and beautiful career as an art critic, but also his work as a publisher um and so and many other um many other topics so uh we're we're all very very excited so i think i should have um the dates fine-tuned by uh september amazing so i guess on on we can kind of end on that note i think as something to hold in the in the future um right John Yao coming to Paris to talk about his yeah as you said his his beautiful career as in as, as a kind of um also as a sort of organizer as a wonderful writer of, yeah. of kind of art criticism but also of poetry um so yeah um Olivier thank you so much for spending thank time so with much. us um and talking us through it's it's been wonderful to think about yeah translation as a creative process and forms of generosity and exchanges and, and cross-pollination as well as to think about that 
the kind of more um, complicated details of working between languages and across borders. Um, so thank you uh, very much indeed. Thank you, Rona and, and Yasmin, and uh, I'll hopefully see you soon. Yes. Uh, yeah.